Well, it's a rainy Saturday afternoon. It's about the perfect time to start building a new Game Boy. Okay, so before we get started, a quick update. I am halfway through editing this epic video and it seems it's a little bit too epic. So what I'm gonna do is split it up into two halves. So the one that you've got here is the initial part of the build, mainly focusing on the Pro Sound mods. And then I'm gonna do a second video which focuses on the installation of the IPS screen. So if you wanted to see how the screen was installed, skip ahead to the other one. If you're curious about the rest of the build, then stick around, hopefully you'll enjoy it. Hi, welcome back to The Shed. New Game Boy build today. This one has got parts I've got from all over the world. I've been waiting on getting all the parts together for ages. They are finally here. It's a wet Saturday afternoon. It's the perfect time to get stuck in. So let's see how we go. First up, we've got a custom shell. These are made by Kitchbent from the USA. Uh, they are slightly different to the original DMG in that they don't have the rounded corner and the back of the shell is less rounded off. It's much more blocky in terms of its shape. Now what that means is there is more room inside for opportunities for mods, which is kind of cool, but also it just looks kind of nice. It's something a little different and we can do something pretty awesome with it, I reckon, for this project. Secondly, we've got another IPS kit. This is a newer one made by Funny Playing. I also have um, a little 3D printed bracket that I've done, so hopefully that will make the installation a little easier. I've got a green glass lens cover for going over the front of the shell. Bright green button set with a matching start and select silicon button. Black grounding shield. And we've got these really cool looking oil slick, bluey, purpley battery contacts to go inside the shell as well. So this is going to be a cool looking Game Boy. We're going to do a big beefy quarter inch pro sound. I did say the case has got more room for mods. We're going to put that to the test and see if we can fit this big beast in there. And of course the real essentials, some batteries, a cup of tea and some jammy dodgers. So I've been looking through my box of donor Game Boys and found this one here. Um, the LCD is pretty much dead around the edges. You can see that black speckledy mark making its way in where that screen is decaying. So that's never really going to end up being useful. It's only ever going to get worse. Also it looks like the screen's come off and someone's glued it all back on with super glue and that's all spread. No battery cover on it. So this used to belong to a Lindsay Williams. So thank you Lindsay for your donation. We're going to open this up and see if we've got usable parts inside. Hopefully it's nice and clean. Tri-wing screwdriver. A little tray that I made for keeping all my screws organised. Oh, look at that. Nice and clean. This will be perfect. Sometimes when you got these, they can be pretty corroded from batteries leaking and then going all over the board and they can look a little bit nasty when you open them up. This one is perfect for what we need. Obviously, the front board isn't ideal, but we have got a clean looking speaker as well. So we're going to open that out and remove the speaker from this and we'll remove the PCB from the back. We've got our backboard. Looks clean enough. That should be okay for us to use. So yeah, you can see more clearly now around the edge of the LCD, there's all this damage to it. From our speaker, looks okay. It's soldered on at these two points, so I'm gonna remove that. Although I did get some colored silicon parts that can go behind the buttons. If you had a clear shell, it might be worth doing that, but otherwise, what we're much better off doing is using the original silicon parts. The conductivity on those, even though they're old, tends to be much, much better, much more responsive. So I'll keep those for using with my new buttons. We'll remove our speaker. You don't even need to do any fancy desoldering. Just hold the wire on the back gently, heat the solder on the front, and the wire will just come out. Do that on both of those, heat it. Once you feel that melt, just gently remove that. And we've got our speaker ready to solder to our new board. So let's start with our back shell. We'll just take the battery cover. These pieces are flat, um, and if you push those out a little bit with a screwdriver, it just helps them to clip in place. So we've got the negative, it's gonna be there. So that'll just push in here, and click down. On the inside, we've got our new ground shield to go on. So that's there. Now, before I do attach the actual back PCB, uh, what I'm gonna do is try and figure out how I'm gonna get this Pro Sound mod in. So the way I've got around that in the past is that obviously this is threaded. I open up a hole in the shell that's just about enough for this to go through, and then I'll actually screw it in. It's got a knurled edge, so you can get a good grip with pliers. I will screw it 
into the hole and then when it's in position a little bit of hot glue just to hold it in place and that's worked fine it'll stay there forever the actual connections for the pro sound are on the back board so if you're doing a pro sound and you are wiring it up to a section on the front you need wires kind of reaching across whereas if it's in the same box here like i've done these before i love the kitchen bench shells because if you've got that in there you just basically route the wires up to those contacts it's dead neat and tidy and when you're separating the bits and putting them together no problem so you can see there that with the length of this when it gets up to the top it's going to bump into that so what i'm going to do is just cut that off altogether seems a bit brutal but it's not really going to matter because it's we're just going to attach a wire to that point there and that should just snap off and now with that removed there and i'll just bend it in slightly so it's not in the way when we're we're screwing it in so now I've got my contacts for my ground, my left, my right. The right is usually the sort of more copper coloured one. So when that goes in there now, when it's screwed all the way in, it's going to be nowhere near that post. Thickness wise, it just about fits in that gap there. So what I need to do is get a hole that is in just the right spot here <laughs> to fit that in place. So the centre of the hole will be about here and then for the other centered part right there like that so i'm going to need to very carefully drill that and get the hole to just the right size just the right space for this to fit in right so what i've got here is a stepped drill bit i got this from deadpan robot in the uk but you can get them from all over the place really but i definitely recommend deadpan robot um so you've got different sizes going all the way up, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, all the way up to 13 millimetres. So if I check that against the size of the barrel on here, 13 is a bit big, but 12 looks just about right. So if I manage to drill all the way down, if it seems to be a little bit off centre, I'll stop and I'll use like a, a needle file to round it out. But if I end up lined up pretty well, I might even get all the way up to 12 mil. but we'll see how that goes. It starts with the little bit which I'm going to start drilling in just at this point here. So I've got a, a round needle file and I'm just going to try and line up with the hole and just make a little bit of a dent for the drill bit to start with. So I've got my drill. Obviously, watch your fingers out of the way on the other side of the hole because you don't want that coming through and catching you. We've got a nice dent in place there now. Check that that still seems to be the right spot. There and there. So I can keep drilling. Looking at that from the end, it looks a little bit over to one side. So all I'm going to do is use my needle file to open that hole out before I go back in with the drill, just so it looks even. And now my sort of second step fits in there, but it's much more centered in there than it was. Now, when you're drilling through with the first bit, it can take a little while, particularly if it's ended up a little blunt like mine. Um, but once you get onto the steps, it's relatively quick. So just do be careful. And you can just keep an eye on this point here and make sure that stays between the two edges and then you know you're fairly well centered. And now that's cutting through very quickly. Feels almost like it's going too big, but that's just because it's such a big hole to go into the Game Boy. It is actually a really neat job that it does. Now before I do any more, I'll just do a quick test with this to see if it fits through already because if it does I don't need to drill any more. I reckon one more step and we're sorted with that. As predicted it's on the 12 there. Don't need the 13, 13 will be too big. Before I do anything else let's clean up this mess. If you've got a desperate craving for a pink mini dustpan and brush this was from Kenji. That's turned out pretty clean, I'm really happy with that. So we've got got the hole out of there. Uh, that's a perfect, nice, neat little round hole where this is going to fit and it will feed in to this gap. Now the gap itself just about fits this in, but it's actually gonna cut into the edge as well. The hole 
fits the end, the tip through there, but not the actual thread, which is just what we want because I need to try and cut a thread. So I need to try and hold this as, as steady as I can and as straight as I can, and just about try and feed that, twist it into the hole. And I'm gonna need to do like I did when I was making the new threads in the screw holes earlier, screw in and out, just keep going with that side to side motion. You might be able to do it with your fingers like I'm doing here. If it feels like that thread's cutting into your fingers, particularly once you get going, um, a pair of pliers might help. edges of my pliers here and here and then that way I'll have a slightly better grip and I'm not going to do any damage to the actual part. It's just neatly in place it's pretty much flush to the bottom it's not going anywhere that's never going to work loose tiny bit of hot glue will just keep it in place and I've got those three points accessible for soldering. What I will do is I'm going to unscrew it slightly so I can solder to my three points. These three points, what I'm gonna do is tin each point and attach a wire to each. So flux on that one, heat that point there and melt some solder onto it. If you want more info on how to solder, I've done a video just recently so you can check that out. So that one's done. And in terms of the wire, I won't need a particularly long one and that should travel up to there comfortably so I've done more than enough there. This is Futaba servo wire. It comes in strips of black and red and white which is perfect for what we want. Red and white for the left and right and black for the ground. This is our right so I'll just strip the end of that, twist it a little bit, heat my wire, let the solder melt onto it. Do you know what? While I'm at it, I may as well do it for the black and white wires too. So where these are currently quite long, because that made them dead easy to tin, I'll just cut those down to about, about five millimeters each, should do it. So because I've already tinned it, it should be fairly easy. There are holes on there, you can, you can feed them through the holes, but you don't really need to, you just need that contact between them. I've got solder on the wire, solder on the contact, and some solder on my soldering iron. So just heat that, melt it, hold it steady while it cools and you can hopefully see that's given a really secure join there. Now I can take my pliers, rotate it a little bit more so I can get to my ground plate there and I'm going to do the same with the black wire. Then I'll rotate and do the same with the white wire. Right, so here we are. I have now soldered all three wires on. I've rotated this to a point where I can see it kind of neatly. Uh, with the red on one side, white on the other, and the black round at the back there, so all those are neatly out of the way. And if I move the wire, these parts will rattle just a tiny bit. Now, because I've got this lined up, I'm going to secure it in place by using hot glue. So, obviously, that was hard work for me to get in with the pliers. That's really not going anywhere. But just to make sure it's absolutely secure, I'll put a little blob of hot glue in here and here. Where this is all blobbed up, this is where the end of my resistor, you can use anything, cocktail stick, spudger, whatever you've got to hand really, but it just saves the glue from sitting there like a blob. Push it into the gaps and that'll hold it in place. Yeah, it looks a little bit messy, but it'll just make sure that this is never coming out with all the cables going in and out. One thing I forgot to mention before, this is a stereo socket. Um, if you look for these big quarter inch sockets, a lot of the time you'll find ones for guitars, which are just a mono socket. If you want a mono Game Boy, if you're using software like Nanoloop Mono, then that might be an absolutely amazing piece of kit. If you're doing this for a regular Pro Sound, you want a stereo socket. So that is now neatly in place. So what we want to do now is move ahead and get things in place. So power switch in and we'll just try and get everything slotted in place here. Still got the slight concern about the, the ground plate. Do you know what? If you're going to do something, make sure you do it right. What I'm going to do, before I go securing any of this in place, is I'm going to make sure that this plate sits securely. Can you see it's kind of like, I don't know if you can see that, but it's like bending over. It won't quite sit flat here because it's just that little bit too long. 
I am gonna just file off the top a little bit so that it fits in better. So I'll see you in a bit. So, on with the show. Power switch to go back in and our main board. So we'll slot the power board in first, get the battery contacts in, just lower that in gently and get the sound board in place there. I've got two screws to put in here and then once they're in place we've got our Pro Sound mod to do. Okay so now it's time for us to wire up the Pro Sound. So I've got the wires connected there, I've fed them. This is a nice little tip. This little hole out of the motherboard is really handy to just sort of thread the wire through and make a neat job when you bring it through for the Pro Sound mod. If also you're wiring up your socket to the other shell when you're moving around this operates like a nice strain relief hole and doesn't end up sort of pulling on the parts where you've soldered and bring that away. Now at this point here next to my volume dial I have got one two three four five solder points there starting from the top we've got right left left right and then ground so ground is going to connect to the black wire here the left and right however are going to connect at the top that's pre-pot that basically means that it connects to the left and right signal but it's independent of this volume control so when i'm plugging into this socket that's going to go into a mixer and then the mixer volume control can sort that with the remaining left and right what i'm going to do is connect up to my headphone jack which is going to be like an internal pro sound so for that these two wires get cut you solder up your right cable to the middle blob of solder and your left cable to the left hand blob of solder and connect those up there and if I want them to be linked in with the volume control which I do then it's the third and fourth dot down. Now as I'm doing the internal pro sound mod I'll be wanting to route my wires from this point and I don't want anything to pinch when I'm putting it back together. So where there's this slight bevel on the edge I'm just going to remove this use my round needle file and just take a little scoop out of there so the wires can be routed neatly. Okay, so I've got a nice little gap to route my wires there, so I'll put that back on. I'm going to prepare these two points, so the left being this one, just heat it, let the solder melt and I'll put some fresh solder in there. This one here, that bit of fresh solder into the mix oh, it should just behave a bit better so all I'll do is reheat each point and just melt an extra little bit of solder on making sure that they don't end up with those points touching one another if you've got it right they'll just look quite shiny five extra little blobs there ready to solder so with this socket being my pre-pot that goes to the top two and the ground. Cut those off and separate them. You can use separate wires, I just like using this stuff. Right, so I might resize these. So if I've got the red and white up here, like that, the black which is there is going to be just a little bit shorter. Strip the ends of the wires. I've got those three wires ready for tinning, so I'll just get a little bit of solder, where are we? Keeping it away from the Game Boy because I don't want any solder or flux to splash onto the shell. So I'll just heat it, get a tiny little bit of solder on each one. And then, because I don't want them to be too long, because the insulation can kind of shrink down a little bit, which means that the, the wire itself ends up a little bit longer. So now I've got solder on the wire, solder on the points on the PCB, should be fairly straightforward. From the top it's right, so I'm going to have right as red. Uh, so I'll solder that first just here. And I'll just sort of lean it against that little solder point. Melt the solder point and if you've got it leaning just right it should just make its way in there. And hold securely. And make sure that you're not soldering accidentally to any other nearby points. Same with the white one there. Lean against the side. When you heat that blob, it'll just merge in there. And finally the black one, which I'll join in from the bottom. Just being my ground connection there. Now that means 
that my Pro Sound mod, this one here, the Prepop Pro Sound, is all wired up because we soldered three points of the wire to the socket, routed them through there, and they're connected here. As I said before, that will end up a little bit untidy, but because you're using this hole and you've got this area here, you can neaten that up. So I've got some tweezers. I'll just feed that through there. I can get these routed as tidily as I can, like that. Just get it out of the way of that screw. Once that's just right, I'll get a little bit of uh, tape. Why did I go so long without using this stuff? It's fantastic. So the tape will just keep that in position and stop the wire from feeding back out. That should be all right. Making sure that I remain clear of this bit because that is where this screw post is gonna sit. So you need to make sure you're clear of that. But otherwise, obviously there's, there's not much gonna be causing me any bother. And all the rest of the wire is neatly in place there. So that should be fine. Next is my internal pro sound. This time I only need the red and white. So I'll take the black off altogether. Take those there. Now you'll remember that we need to cut some of these wires here. You've got like a white, black, black, black. So it's the first two blacks there. So you're leaving the ones on the other side, the black and white. Clip in there. One, two, get those out of the way. So the left, the white one is gonna be the longest like that. And then the red is gonna come up a little bit shorter. So I'll cut that off just a bit there again. Strip the ends. Okay, so for putting this wire on, just put a bit of flux on the wire. Flux all over the bit where I'm joining to. Reheat the blob. Get the wire in place. There we go. Swallows it right up. And then move around and get my red wire in position. Reheat that blob, being careful not to melt the insulation on the white wire. Make sure the wire goes in. Keep the heat on so it's secure. Let it cool, quick tug to make sure that's in position. So that's those two wires, left, right, and then this will feed through the little bit that I filed out before. That's there. It's just coming around like that to that spot there. I'll do the same as I did with the other. Separate them slightly. Strip the ends. I wasn't quite wanting to attach, but it's just worth being patient with that. Now it's a case of routing my wires neatly. So once all that's taped up, we've got the solder points all attached here. Right, left, left, right, ground, all done. All routed neatly around to the strain relief hole with the two wires across for the post pot internal pro sound here and the other three connected to my great big chunky quarter inch jack there so that should be pretty awesome for getting sound out mm -hmm. 